Hey guys, so this is the behind the scenes video for March. Coming to you right now from Brisbane, Australia. We're going for a walk in the park, it's wonderful. So, been an exciting month. Got some cool footage to show you, hope you guys enjoy. All right, let's start with some pictures. I've been asked by a bunch of people about the gear that we're using in our travels. You're looking at all of our luggage. My set's on the left, my wife's is on the right. We're doing these travels with hand luggage and it actually makes life a lot easier. So just before we left for Australia, we spent a little bit of time in Christchurch. I had an interview there that the academic backed out at the last minute, so I don't think I actually got any interviews while in Christchurch, but they recently had an earthquake. This is the outside of a cathedral, and this was some kind of a, an office building that was nearby that was also damaged and still being repaired. Okay, so after that, we're done with our New Zealand trip and we're getting ready to go to Australia. Now for you sophisticates out there, you're probably going to be unimpressed with what I show you. But my wife and I thought it was pretty dang cool. This plane had an upstairs, which I think is where the fancy like first class people stay. But seriously, how crazy is that? You've got an upstairs in your bus in the sky. Um, Just boarded the plane, going to Sydney, Australia for the first time. Super stoked. Amazing interviews upcoming. This is the first time we've flown on Emirates. And I'm not in first class or anything, but it's pretty damn nice. Finally, I have leg room. Six foot four, I rarely get a lot of leg room. <laughs> Made it to Sydney. Now we're waiting for the Uber to pick us up. Of course, they say express pickup here, but what that means is it's not the officially approved taxi cartel pickup, which is like half a mile that way. You've got to walk to the parking lot in order to use Uber, but we're going to do it anyway, good principle. So Sydney is a gorgeous city. We were only there for about a week, and we only got to actually explore the city for about a day and a half. But it's gotta be one of the prettiest cities that we've been to so far. So it's a big day. Today, gonna go see Norman Wilberger, University of New South Wales. That's the bus we're getting on right now. Can't wait, I'm stoked. It never ceases to amaze me when I'm on these university campuses just how many students there are. So many young minds are being shaped. One thing I've noticed is being on these campuses, I feel very old because I look around and I say, I think surely these people are no more than 15 years old, these students. I think it's a sign that I'm officially getting old. So this is me setting up for the video interview with Norman Weilberger. It was really fantastic for him to offer to record this because he's got a little bit of a YouTube following, he's got a bit of a following online. So I knew if this one went well that it's going to start bringing people over to my stuff. Just uh, say, just say a few words. Testing one, two, three. Okay. Talking about the foundations of mathematics with Dr. Norman Wilberger. I can tell you you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny about this interview, you hear me talk about it in one of the next clips, but I actually was worried that it didn't go that great. Before I saw it, I was thinking, oh man, this did not exactly go as planned. And I was pretty concerned because, you know, I pumped up this interview. Though fortunately, after watching it, I was very pleased. I think it was a great success and his audience really, really liked it too. All right, walking back after a successful Wildberger interview. We're walking in a tunnel here over some kind of road, I don't know. So that's actually what I'm talking about. A little bit of an art artistic photography for you. Uh, to be honest, I was a little tiny bit disappointed with, uh, with Wildberger because our game plan, it didn't really stick to. I had this game plan of the concept we're gonna cover and he kind of took it off in his own direction. So that was a little disappointing, but um, still a super cool guy. Actually, my wife and I went out to um, lunch with him. We had sushi and stuff, so that was cool. And if we come back to Sydney, which we might, uh, good chance we'll be hanging out with him again and having more conversations with him, just because he's got such a unique perspective on things. All right, so next picture on the list, you're looking at my setup, my uber sophisticated workstation, consisting of a mic, a laptop, and a couple of liquid beverages. So like I said, we got about a day and a half to explore Sydney. And I don't know if you guys find this cool, but I found it really neat. Their subway system, every other train is a double-decker train. Maybe that's unimpressive, but I'm a sucker for double-decker things, just like the plane. This is the obligatory Sydney Opera House. We got to visit some Aussie animals. 
and that's me feeding one of the many varieties of marsupial they have in Australia. Just got off the plane at the Brisbane airport. So after Sydney, we flew north to the city of Brisbane. It's a beautiful city here, but we've been dealing with rain and sickness. <laughs> so we haven't been able to explore that much, except one of the coolest buildings in Brisbane. Again, make fun of me if you must. But it's an old church that was turned into a pancake house, open 24 hours. Look at that on the inside, how cool is that? And they have ridiculously tasty pancakes. It was one of our highlights of Brisbane and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Just got done with another interview at University of Queensland. Um, so I literally, on the way here, had an Uber driver that in the course of our um, uh, 15 minute ride here, he was telling me <laughs> that he was a man of God and that he was telling me about how the Pope is the Antichrist and how God told him to tell me that I'm going to do great things in my life. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> in the course, I just, an Uber driver. It was like, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah, hey, where are you, where are you from? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're from the United States, blah, blah, blah. Two minutes later, let me tell you about how the end times are going to happen in the next 10 years. He's actually a pretty cool dude, and he gave me some, uh, he gave me a mint, so. I don't know, that was, that was a crazy experience. So this clip is from an Australian park that I'll explain in just a minute. There you go, Josh. There he comes. There we go. Are you cutting? <laughs> oh, what an interesting fish that they're feeding in the park. Now, my friend, what you're watching is a Australian family feed raw meat to the eels that are in the Brisbane park. There's just eels hanging out there, and that's some some lizard iguana thing that's just hanging out in the park and that they also feed <laughs> with their their bare hands, they're feeding like raw hamburger meat too. So this is a clip of me talking to Stefan Kinsella, and just before I started, there was a jackhammer that started going outside. So I had to move my setup really quick, stuff it in a in, a, in this closet thing and sit cross-legged on the floor while talking to Kinsella about argumentation ethics. On the show. So it's a real it's a real delight to have you on. I want to be totally in the rationalist ethics camp. So that's all for this month, guys. Do make sure to give me some feedback to let me know what more you guys would like to see behind the scenes. In two days, we are going from Australia to Tokyo. And after we're done with Japan, my wife will be flying home and I'll be going solo down to Thailand, and maybe one more destination before I also go back to the States. So I deeply appreciate your guys' consistent support, and I'm very satisfied and humbled by the fact that in the pursuit of truth, I can create value for you guys. Until next month.